Well, in the last hour, European judges have ruled that the rights of more than 1,000 prisoners were breached when they were banned from voting in elections between 2009 and 2011. So are they right? Should inmates be allowed to vote or did they lose that right when they were convicted of their crimes? Well, joining us now to discuss this are Steve Dagworthy from Prison Consultants, which gives advice to inmates. Also with us, the journalist Jake Wallace-Simons. Before we get started, though, a reminder that you can join the debate too. You can get in touch all the usual ways. You can tweet us at Sky News at Jane Secker Sky, including the hashtag Sky Debate. Text on 84501 or email news at sky.com. Let us know what you think or if there are any points that you want to put to our guests here and we'll uh, try to read out some of your comments as we go along. Uh, right, let's start with, uh, with you, Steve Dagworthy from Prison Consultants. Uh, these people in prison, they have committed a crime. They have presumably breached somebody else's human rights. Why should they be allowed to vote? Well, personally, I think that, and it's my opinion, that, that prisoners should be allowed to vote for, for one simple reason. It's in the first is to understand the function of a prison. Now, people are sent to prison as punishment. They are not sent there to be punished. And the purpose of prison is to rehabilitate people so that when they are finally released, they live a life that is fulfilling and law-abiding and they pay their taxes, etc. Now, if, if by sending people to prison we are telling them that um, you, uh, we're going to breach your human rights, we're going to deny you the vote, we're going we're to tell you that you're, you don't count anymore, then you are, you are denigrating that person far too much and effectively you are, you're kicking a man while he's down when, he, when he's, what you should be doing in prison is, is building the man or the woman back up again so that they are ready to re-enter society. As, as a law-abiding citizen. So my view is quite simple. My view is it's part of the rehabilitation process. And this country has got a terrible reputation as far as a uh, terrible uh, statistics as far as rehabilitation is concerned. And rehabilitation costs this country somewhere in the region of £13 billion a year. Okay. So I feel that anything that can be done to assist rehabilitation should be looked at. OK, well, let's put some of those points to, to Jake Wallace-Simons. Uh, Jake, uh, as, as you were saying there, prison is about rehabilitation, or it should be, shouldn't it? And that prison should be a punishment in itself. We shouldn't punish people further when they're there. Uh, two wrongs don't make a right, essentially. Well, that's right, but I think that the majority of the British public will agree with me when I say that depriving prisoners of the vote uh, gives the right message both to prisoners themselves and to the victims, who are often forgotten in this debate, and to the general public. I mean, from the point of view of a prisoner, whether you're a paedophile or a rapist or a murderer or a fraudster, um, you have ridden roughshod over the rule of law, over the social contract, and caused immense harm to innocent people. Um, and I think it's only right that society should then say that we no longer trust your judgment, we do not want you to contribute towards uh, having a political influence on our country or choosing the next government. Uh, for the period that you're inside, obviously after your release and you've paid your debt to society, that changes. And thinking about it from the point of view of the victims, I mean, if uh, you're a victim of rape or somebody has killed one of your family members, to then think that that person is sitting behind bars, casting an election to choose the next Prime Minister and the next government, I think will leave a very bitter taste indeed. And from the point of view of wider society, I think that giving the vote to prisoners somehow cheapens the vote. Uh, I mean, the vote, uh, the right to vote is obviously a right, but it's also a privilege. Uh, it's something that we should value and hold dear. It's something which previous generations have fought and in many cases died for. Uh, and sharing it with people who have been guilty of paedophilia or rape or fraud or whatever, uh, I think cheapens it in the public eye. OK. What about that point, Steve, that, that voting is seen by many as a privilege, a privilege for those who are in society? These people are paying a debt to society. So shouldn't they be excluded from that? Well, that's a good point. And, I, and I, I understand the sentiment. And I understand the sentiment the public is probably, is probably backing Jake's theory. Um, however, it, it is a right. It is a, it has been, it's, it's been decreed by the European Court of Human Rights that, that prisoners should be allowed to vote. And surely, isn't it hypocritical that when somebody is sent to prison by, by courts for not upholding the law or holding themselves above the law, that, they are de that their then decisions about their prison sentence are taken, which are again above the law. So isn't that somewhat hypocritical? I mean, 
Jake, you know, how would you answer that, first of all? And we've got more points to put to you. Well, I mean, I mean, the fact is that it isn't a fundamental human right. Uh, it's not mentioned anywhere in the European Convention on Human Rights, specifically. It's not mentioned in the United Nations Covenant on Civil and Political Rights or anywhere else in, in uh, international law. And Britain's Parliament has said that we don't think that it's right for prisoners to have the vote. This ruling comes from the European Court of Human Rights, which has interpreted Article 3 of the European Convention on Human Rights, which says that people have a right to a free election. That doesn't mention prisoners. That's open to interpretation. It's something which Britain uh, doesn't interpret in that way. We don't think, our Parliament has said, that we don't think that prisoners should be given the right to vote. The European uh, Court of Human Rights has disagreed and is seeking to impose its will on our country and I think that that's wrong. They should, they should butt out and leave us alone and let sovereign nations make up their own minds on this issue. I mean if you look all across Europe there's a range of different policies in different countries. I think about 10 or 15 different countries have a blanket ban on prisoners voting. Uh, some don't have a ban but then they get round it by not releasing prisoners on polling day uh, and some have a ban on the most serious prisoners and what this indicates is that it's a matter about which sovereign nations disagree and it should be decided on a sovereign level not imposed on us by Strasbourg. Mm. So, Steve would, would you welcome it being decided on a case-by-case -case level perhaps the most serious cases the horrific crimes the horrific murders but that the people who are locked up for I don't know, some non-payment of council tax perhaps um, that the, the people on lesser offences perhaps on those crimes with less than a year's sentence should be allowed? Well, I think you should look at the, the, the time left to serve. I mean, if somebody is going to be in prison for the next 20, 25 years, for example, then I think it's, 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 it's logical, or it could be argued, that they, that person may forego his right to vote. But if someone's doing a short sentence um, for a misdemeanor um, and they are due to be released, say, within the uh, time of the next parliament, say, within the next year or five years or whatever, then I feel they, they, their, their voice should be heard. And what about people who, who are let out case. on appeal? If, if somebody, if somebody is, is, is uh, ultimately found not guilty, who wasn't allowed to vote, and they're released on appeal, they can't get their, their vote retrospectively. Yeah, and for me, really it's, for me, it's, it's about rehabilitation. It's simple okay. as that. OK, Jake? I mean, it's already the case that prisoners in Britain, if they've got six months left to serve uh, of, on their sentence, they can vote. Prisoners who are on remand can vote. Uh, and just to pick up um, uh, the, the point about rehabilitation, I mean, I had a chat uh, with, with you just before in the green room, and you acknowledged that a key moment for rehabilitation is acknowledging responsibility for what you've done. There's a point where you have to, as a prisoner, stop railing against the courts, stop railing against the unfairness of the world and take responsibility for the fact that you have committed this crime, caused harm to innocent people and at that point you can begin to rebuild your life and rehabilitate yourself to rejoin society. And I think that if prisoners are in prison, in prison uh, preoccupied with their rights, my right to vote or my, my rights to hold elected office or, or whatever it is, I think that acts as an obstacle to taking responsibility for what you've done and actually works against the process of rehabilitation. Okay. Uh Let's just ask you, Steve, we've asked our viewers uh, for, for their views, for their thoughts. Lots have been coming into us. Uh, coming down on both sides of the argument, really, I'll put to you Emma Fitzsimmons. She emailed in, she tweeted in, uh, do they have the right to vote? Why is this even being debated? She refers to Mark Bridger. He is the man that, of course, killed uh, four-year-old April Jones in Wales. He has the right to vote? I don't think so. That There is a great deal of palpable outrage amongst the general public, isn't there, that people who have committed these horrific crimes do seem to, to have quite an easy life in prison. And I know you say that it is about rehabilitation, but it is also about punishment. But it's, it's easy to focus on the people who have committed horrific crimes. And these people are a small percentage of, of um, the, the prison population. A large percentage of the prison population are those who haven't committed um, uh, uh, massive crimes, uh, we're talking, or, or heinous crimes, um, and are doing short sentences. And in, um, my argument is this, is that, that the people like Mark Bridger are probably not going to be released into society, back into society. However, most people, 99% of the prison population, do come back into society. And my, my view is this, is that when somebody goes into prison, um, the, 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 the rehabilitation starts the day that they arrive in prison. 
and part of that is telling the prisoner, look, you need to take you need to take responsibility for what you've done. You need to accept that you're here. You need to engage with us. You need to show us that you are keen to rehabilitate. And I think it sends out the wrong signal to the prisoner. Is that the first thing he gets told, when or he or she gets told when she arrives in prison, is that we're we're we're, ta we're taking away a, a, a ruling that's been given by the European Court of Human Rights, and that is you're 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 not allowed to vote. And I come back to my point: is that if you keep kicking somebody while they're down, it becomes very difficult for, for them to get back yes, up, it and it and it leads on to other things such as the the, the 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 ability to get back into employment, the ability to get a bank account, the ability to get insurance. You what you're doing is you're 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 never forgiving an offender. And basically, okay. if if a prisoner comes out of prison, then he he should at some point he should be allowed back into society. And okay. I think if this is a ruling, then they should be given. Okay, Steve, Jake. But, I mean, focusing on prisoners who are serving the shortest sentences is equally as deceptive as focusing on those who are serving the longest sentences. I mean, if somebody's only serving a year, the chances that that's going to fall over a general election anyway uh, are pretty slim. And I think from the public's point of view, there is a lot of concern that sentences as a whole are too short. Uh, I, I think that conditions in prison are horrendous. I don't want to detract from that. But there is a sense that there is um, that too much lenient, leniency around uh, and prisoners are doing short sentences and getting off back into society without really having thought about what they've done or rehabilitating okay. what about uh, this themselves. point Jack? what about what about the point that that it discriminates disproportionately because those who are in prison are disproportionately from often the most disenfranchised parts of society that point made by Paul Trembath who got in touch on Twitter he says if anyone needs representation it's the people who whatever they have done are thought by some to deserve no rights at all isn't this a fair point though that, that those in prison perhaps need the greatest representation society and the greatest chance to say how society should change, Jake? Well, I, I, I do have some sympathy with that point of view. I mean, I understand that if you're in prison uh, and you're suffering poor conditions, overcrowding and so forth, uh, there will be a feeling that your voice isn't being heard by politicians because you can't vote. I can see that. But I think we have to return to this point. Prisoners need to ask themselves, why are they inside? It's not because society is unfair. It's not because they are from a certain se impoverished sector of society. It's because they've broken the law. And with every uh, crime, uh, there are victims, whether it's a Ponzi scheme or fraud or whether it's murder or, um, or, or rape or paedophilia, wh whatever the crime, it causes harm to uh, innocent people and it causes harm to society. And that is why they're locked up for no other reason. And prisoners need to accept the responsibility for the fact that they have committed that crime. They have, as I said, ridden roughshod over the rule of law and over society's expectations. And it's time for them to stop demanding rights and start to come to terms with the fact that they've done that and then accept responsibility and move on and rejoin society uh, as a rehabilitated person and then take their full place, be able to vote again and, and join us in, 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 in a full way. OK, Jake wallace Simons. I know there'll be a lot of our viewers who will be agreeing with you. The European Court of Human Rights doesn't, though, and Steve Dagworthy doesn't either. Thank you both gentlemen very much for joining us.